Sunshines, can you think of three better places to be in the world? Go on, try hard, try hard. Uh, Goodwood, uh, Goodwood Revival, better okay. places, yes. better places. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't think of any better places. I may be able to think of one or two good ones. Uh, Goodwood Revival would be as good. Uh, Silverstone next weekend would be as good. Uh, and the TT in the Isle of Man would, would no, the TT in the Isle of Man would be as good but they would be very hard-pressed indeed to be as good. You're a proper bike fan, aren't you? I'm a, I'm a, big, I'm a big bike man, yeah. My, my dad uh, was a professional racing motorcyclist, won the TT in the Isle of Man, and I was racing against John Surtees in his youth, and all I ever saw of it was his leather-clad backside disappearing into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> well, John's going to be here later on on the BMW Pavilion. We'll be having a chat to him. Of course, the only man to have ever, ever won a world championship on two wheels and four wheels. And will that ever be replicated? Will that ever happen again? Well, it could be. I mean, Jeff, Jeff Jew was going to be taking part in Formula One, and for all sorts of political reasons, uh, it fell through. Uh, Mike Hellwood might have gone on to be a really top car man, but he crashed at the Nürburgring. Uh, Tarsio Nuvolari was very good. Uh, Varsi was very good. Uh, who have we got in the present moment? Well, Valentino Rossi was rumoured to be going to Ferrari. Best of the speed last year. Explain to Entirely, yourself, entirely no. Murray's fault that was. Oh, was it? Go on, explain to everyone what happened. Well, <laughs> but then I'll tell you what really happened. Yeah, I'll tell you what really happened. Well, there was, a, well, there was slight cross wires. I, I understood that they were going to close the hill off, yep. and Murray's adoring public were going to get the chance to wave and smile and take photos of Murray. So I was driving in a Z4, and I sort of stopped and did some wheel spins, went on the grass, did some donuts, parked the car up, got Murray to wave at everybody. And it was only after the flint wall on the right hand side when I pulled off the track and I was in the middle of one of my rather weak looking donuts uh, that a car came flying past us at about 150 miles an hour and I realised the circuit wasn't shut at all. And when we got to the top, they dragged me out of the car, they took me to see the stewards, the marshals weren't happy with me and I had this sudden sort of awakening that I could have been the man that killed Murray Walker a good one. <laughs> and, uh, that would have been a bad headline for me, I think. I was very embarrassed, actually. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah. Being driven by the great Jay Humphrey, I, I really expected something better. <laughs> Damon Hill becoming the world champion, and I've got to stop now because I've got a lump in my throat. You know, right through to the hard times and, you know, drivers dying out on the track. Murray, I've always said that it's, it's very difficult to get absolutely right every single time what the public are thinking and to get the mood correct and it's not something that you can learn it's not something that you can train it's just something that you have an innate ability to do and Murray got it right 99.9% .9 of the time uh, the, there was the odd point one percent where things came out slightly back to front do you, do you want the money now or like... no, I'll, t I'll take the money now <laughs> no no but you know Murray set the benchmark and it's it's up to people like me to try and follow in the footsteps of people like Murray Walker um, and try and do the business on a weekly basis and it isn't easy to be honest you know, you could be quite good at your job or you can live your life quite well and all those things. But when you get to Formula One, you realise that they've taken every single percent of the team and they've tried to improve on every little area. I remember being in Abu Dhabi in the first year and there was two people who just qualified from university painting out the green stripe around a chair on the Vodafone McLaren Mercedes team stand because, as I was told by them, green isn't a team colour. And they didn't want people to see that. And it's those sort of attention to detail. And you do, you feed off that. And then you want to be as good and you want to improve and you want to make the coverage, you know, as good as possible and try and take, you know, people who love motor racing and don't have the ability to be at the races as close as possible to the action. I'll tell you what I always used to... Sorry, you no, about to ask all. a question. No, you go, I got you there. You go yeah. for it. Uh, I'll tell you what always used to stimulate me. When, when, when most people, myself included in other circumstances, get on a 747 aeroplane, uh, you'd know your wife, and if you've got your children with you, you'd know them, and that's about it. There's 350 other people, or whatever it is, on the aeroplane. When Jake and I get on a 747, we know everybody on the aeroplane, and everybody knows us, and you get up, and you walk about, and you talk to each other, 
uh, and, and, it, and it really is a, a, a brotherhood of people who are interested in motorsport. And it's a wonderful, wonderful environment to be in. So not yeah. trusted to drive this year, Jake? No, not trusted to drive. Very much <laughs> taken out of the car and not allowed back in. And I have noticed I've not been able to drive up the hill. Uh, but to be honest, when you're driving with Nick, uh, who races in the BTCC, you don't need to be driving yourself. I tell you what, we did more donuts coming back down the hill than all the other cars put together. We were spinning the wheels, we were, we were having some great fun, you know, some good burnouts and some, some good smoke, and I think the crowds liked it. They really enjoyed it. Now, Nick, just, just tell us what it's like driving around valuable cargo, and essentially you are charged with doing this in a professional way, and you're in one of the most beautiful cars on the stand, a very rare M3 GTS. Uh, the car's brilliant, it's great up the track. Um, uh, Jake said we've got to burn the tyres completely out. We kept <laughs> making me stop, and I think we must have done about 50 burnouts, which the crowd really enjoyed. So uh, it's a real privilege to be here, and it's a, it's a great product. Are you driving Murray up the hill? I don't know. Are we driving? Have you? Have you yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't told him. Yeah, no, that's okay. what you want to see. Don't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah to see Murray Walker, of course they do. Uh, and Jake, you've got another one to look forward to. You're with your lovely wife today as well. You're trying to convince her to go out on the rally stage, yeah. telling her, don't talk, I'll finish, telling her it's not very fast or scary. It's because I want her to do it. The thing is, I obviously never see Harriet, so when I do get the chance to see her, I need to rope her in. Maybe we should ask you lot, should my wife be a passenger with Chris Meek up on the rally stage at the mini rally car? Yeah. Absolutely she should. There you go, Harriet.